Much has been written of Jeff Fennec's dream of winning four world titles, a feat that would earn him a special place in Australian and world boxing history. However, very little has been said about another Australian who has already achieved what Fennec so badly desires. Adam Watt holds four different world kickboxing titles, one of which he successfully defended this week in Sydney. In this report, Charles Stewart profiles a man looking for recognition, not so much for himself, but for his chosen sport. This night of kickboxing, these people that are, that are here that have come together, I've, I've seen all these people fight from around the world, and uh, I really think it's, it's going to really showcase kickboxing at its best. That's what I really want to show the Australian fans, is um, what, a, what a great art this is, an art form, and, and what a great sport it is also. In professional kickboxing, this is the biggest night the sport has ever seen in Australia. Along with a top international card of fighters, Adam Watt will be defending his world cruiserweight title. But for the tall fighter from Manly, there's much more at stake than just a world championship belt. The Adam Watt story begins here on Sydney's northern beaches. After being encouraged to join the Manly Surf Club, a gangly youngster found himself in a boat crew, which twice won the Australian Championship. It was the focus of his life, but that changed when his sweep urged him to cross-train. For surf boat rowing, you need flexibility to reach forward to take that catch that water. It's a, it's a great advantage, whereas I wasn't flexible enough, so my coach said, go down to the Queenslip Surf Club and get flexible somehow. So I went down to the surf club and there's a uh, martial art style that was going on there at the time. So I joined up originally just to, to get flexible. And from then I just fell in love with, with the whole aspect of individual training. At 192 centimetres, Adam had a major reach advantage with both kicking and punching and quickly became Australian champion. But he wanted more. So he headed for Japan with very little money and lots of ambition. I just knew, I knew in my mind what was going to happen. Like I didn't tell anybody I knew what was going to happen, but I just, I had a, I had a vision which was, I'm going to go to Japan, I'm going to stay in a dojo, a karate dojo, I'm going to train and I'm going to become a world champion. Um, if I told anyone that before I left, of course, that uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> In Japan, Adam Watt attracted immediate interest from the kingmakers in the sport of kickboxing. Over three and a half years, he became a star. This knockout blow stunning not only his highly ranked opponent, but also the critics, who labelled it the spinning backfist of the decade. It wasn't the only one he'd used to win his fights. Beating heavyweights and fighters in his own division, he became the most popular foreign fighter in Japan. With four world championship titles in different kickboxing disciplines, he returned to Australia, knowing he'd no longer have to travel to places like Holland or Siberia to fight. The challenges would come to him. It's not a brutal sport, it's an art form. I want people to see it as that, and that's the way I fight. And when they watch it, I want them to see. Um, in Japan, they call me a technician, uh, or the KO artist. And that's what I want. I don't want to be the mauler or the, the basher or anything. I want to be the technician or the artist. This big man generates frightening power from his lightning fast punches and kicks. The damage that can be inflicted is often terrifying. Why do you want to hit across the arms here? <laughs> break someone. Break someone arm before. In Japan. And I said, that's sort of the same right kick, it block and break it. Broke someone's arm? Yeah. That's not my object. I don't go in there saying, I'm going to break this guy's arm, I'm going to knock him out. I go in there to say, is my style better? That's, that's the way I see it. And if I knock him out or I do break his arm, it's 
his fault because he hasn't trained to defend that. Um, I don't go there with the purpose to maim, inflict injury, and knock out. I go in there to prove that my style is better. Let's go, bring it up straight, punches. Go on, don't stop in between, push it. To supplement his fight earnings, Adam opened his own dojo or gym in Manly and now finds other champion sports people coming to learn. Among them, Ironman Guy Leach, ski paddler Dean Gardner, surfer Rob Bain, and triathlete Simon Skillicorn. I had people come in and then just after a lesson, just like, they can't believe it and then they join every lesson and then they come back and they, and they get the bug. And once they get the bug, they, they start improving and they love it. So you know what we're doing, we're gonna run a minute, just strive at 80%, right? So then, and we're gonna leave every minute 15. It's also an exchange of skills. Adam helps them, and the others pass on their knowledge to help and motivate the fighter in his preparation for the big fight. I run the, run the beach with them, uh, bike ride with them, surf with them, swim with them. Uh, that's what I do. I don't try and uh, race any Ironman races or go to any major surfing contests or anything. So the, so what the flags, right? So we'll have to put some Sydney casino ones up. Casino the cooperation down. goes further than yeah, just fitness. Adam Watt, kickboxer, is now also... Adam Watt, fight promoter, and his manly mates are in his corner helping with the biggest gamble of his life. I've got guys like Guy Leach who is handling the press and the lead up with Dean Gardner. I've got uh, Rob Burgess and Doug Lees. These are local businessmen around there helping the setups. So we've broken into three groups where they've all headed one group. And my, my, the area I'm in is winning this fight. With his friends helping, the pressure is reduced, but Adam isn't fighting for a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar purse. He's risking several times that amount on staging the event. I know mentally I'm strong enough to be able to control the event and switch off one week before the fight and then go into fight mode. Um, if I wasn't mentally strong enough to do that, I'm sure I would have known about it by now, but I know I've got a great team behind me. Um, those guys are running with all the logistic setups. Um, I'm sure it'll be a success. Ladies and gentlemen, as it enters the arena, please put your hands together for Steve. The house full sign is not up, but the crowd is good. As always, the Manly support team is evident in the expensive front row seats, and he's keen to justify their faith and reinforce his own. The challenger, Dutchman Errol Paris, is European champion and no pushover. Promoter now needs to be fighter again. The first round begins well, but leaving his guard open, Adam finds out just how dangerous his opponent is. The knockdown stuns not only the fighter, but also his supporters. This wasn't in the script, nor was the other stunning left landed 30 seconds later. Fortunately, the bell comes to the rescue, and Adam gets 60 precious seconds to regroup mentally and physically. <laughs> Round two, composure regained, and Adam puts doubt aside with his own decisive left, one minute 14 into the round. It's the 22nd time in 32 fights Adam Watt has KO'd his opponent. The world title is still his, but more importantly for Adam Watt, he finishes the night a winner, both in and out of the ring. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. And Sydney, you're really showing what, what can be done here. I think we can do it if we all get together, support each other. And you see kickboxing is very entertaining. We can make a great over. And I think you've got to thank yourselves and give yourself a clap as well. And for all seasons, the technician, a good man to have on your side. Charles Stewart reporting. Ahead on the show, we chase a world-class cycling...